need to help me draw it. So that's what a, that's what like a radio signal from a radio station looks like. If you could see it, obviously it's light, so you can't. The information. This is the frequency of the packet, as you can see, it reaches the size and kind of forms to that shape of the wave. Yeah. But the information is all stored in here. So the, the talking and stuff is all stored. So this isn't necessarily a smooth wave. It could go like, you know, kind of like that. It's not a smooth inside, but it all fits inside that packet. Huh. And your, your, your receiver receives the big part and then the rest of it gets translated in the rest of the radio. Interesting, huh? What's that? So, those, that's your radium energy. Next, mechanical energy. And so, radium energy and mechanical energy are both types of what kind of energy? Kinetic energy. And so, you can assume everything has potential energy. No matter, everything's got potential, and it's all pretty much the same. It's just in how you release it that changes. So, all these types of energy that we're talking about are pretty much kinetic energy. Different types of kinetic energy. But the primary two are radiant and mechanical. Everything else really falls as a subcategory of one of those two. So mechanical energy, what is mechanical energy? Uh -huh. if, if, if I go and I throw this across the room, is that, am I giving it mechanical energy? Yes. <laughs> yes. Mechanical energy is moving mass. Okay, if you're moving a mass, any mass, you're using mechanical energy. You're, well, I shouldn't say you're using mechanical. Well, kind of is. Yeah, it is mechanical. Energy. You're giving the object mechanical energy. It now has the ability to do some kind of work. Now that I write it, I get it. <laughs> so riding a bicycle, the wind blowing, those are all forms of mechanical energy. Like so that so that what feels like wind hitting you when you jump out of an airplane. Really so when you're out in the wind, the wind's giving you energy. It's hitting you. And it's imparting some of this energy to you. When you jump on an airplane, it's the reverse. It feels the same. So you can't always detect whether you're giving away energy or receiving energy. When you jump on an airplane and the wind slows you down, you're giving away energy. But when you're out in the wind, and you feel the wind, the wind's giving you energy. Except sometimes it slows you down. <laughs> well, it can slow you down, right? And you can steal some of that energy back. Absolutely. When you're riding your bicycle really fast, you're using all kinds of mechanical energy. You got the wind slowing you down. And then your body's using energy. That's a different type. We're going to get to that in a second. But you're using the pedals. You're pushing down on those pedals. And the pedals are turning the chain, which is turning the back wheel. That's mechanical energy. Really have to keep track of all these energies. Yeah, oh, you bet. It's gonna be a hard test. <laughs> How about sound energy? What's that? Um, uh, like delta. Huh? <laughs> so we're gonna talk about this more in another chapter. But sound energy is another type of wave. What I was describing here, these are vertical waves. This is like waves in the ocean. But there's another type of wave. And it's the kind that sound is what you're listening to me talk to you with. That's an orderly wave. It shouldn't be orderly. Motion of the particles is fairly close to random. <laughs> oh, sound is vibration. Uh, yeah. I just thought of it. I knew that before. Sure.
couldn't think of that. <laughs> so, when air, when I speak, what I'm doing is I'm pushing on a bunch of air molecules. And they come out of my mouth and they get them close together. And then they expand apart and they come close together and they expand apart. Like a spring going up and down. And that's a horizontal wave. So sound energy is a type of what kind of energy? Is light involved? No. No. So this is a form of mechanical energy. Sound energy is a form of mechanical energy. Which is a form of kinetic energy. Absolutely right. <laughs> okay, next one. Thermal energy. Thermal energy. What is thermal energy? Huh? Thermal is heat. That's what we measure with the thermometer, right? Yes. It's yeah. heat. Yeah. Now, heat is really, in some sense, a combination of both mechanical and radiant energy. Okay. Okay. This could be an interesting energy. So, when something's hot, anything with a temperature Doesn't gives happen. off light. If it has a temperature, whether you're boiling hot or an iceberg in the ocean, it, it gives off light. That's weird. The colder something is, again, the colder something is, the longer the wavelength of light it gives off. Therefore, but that's a form of energy, right? And the hotter it is, the shorter the wavelength it gives off. It has to be the perfect wavelength for us to see. Yes, and it has to be hot enough before you can see it. And not too hot. So and not too hot, yes. It doesn't give off just one wavelength though, luckily. So it actually gives off a whole spectrum. When I talk about the wavelength it gives off, the, the peak wavelength, in other words, the, one, the brightest wavelength, the one it gives off the most, is either long or short. So thermal energy, is coupled with radiation, gives off light, but it also indicates what else? What else did I tell you about temperature? What are we measuring with the thermometer? We're not measuring light with the thermometer. We're measuring the thermometer. Well, yeah, what kind of energy? It's some, something or other. What is causing the thermometers to register something? It's not light. I'm telling you it's not light that's making it register something. What else is it? Let's see if I read this, you might help. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> It's the molecules. We talked about this. The molecules, the hotter something is, the faster the molecules in that something move. Okay? And that's what we measure with a thermometer. How fast they're moving, how much kinetic energy each individual molecule has. And in a, in a, in a sense, how much energy each individual atom has in that substance. So again, this, is a, this one is a combination of both. Thermal energy is a combination of both radiant energy and mechanical energy. But they're both forms of kinetic. Okay? Yeah. yeah. Now, what about chemical energy? What is chemical energy? Chemical energy. Let's see. It's energy. The plants use. Mm -hmm. To produce. The chemicals that Sugar. Fuel their Sugar. Uh huh. So chemical energy, in essence, is radiant energy. Oh, brother. <laughs> what happens? What? You have to keep track of which one is ghost to witch thingy and. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be difficult. <gasps> that could be difficult, huh? I'm so. Not like this <laughs> Chemical energy, you really need to know what these are. You don't necessarily need to keep track of where they go. It's you just never this. know. Those tests give you the oddest problem. <laughs> nah. 
So Stop. chemical energy is really a form of radiant energy. Why? Okay. Because what happened is you have a bond, right? You remember studying about the bonds? Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you break the bond, you release energy. You release energy, and it releases in the form of light. Gamma rays. Not necessarily yeah, gamma rays. It could be. What could be visible light. Those lights are using chemical energy to release visible light. <laughs> so the electrons are hitting a phosphor, which causes the phosphor to release energy. So it absorbs the, light, the energy from the mechanical energy from the electron which excites the electrons in it, and then they lose energy again, and they give off radiant energy. So we're not breaking down that chemical, but if you break a chemical apart, you release energy. <laughs> Similarly, sometimes when you put two chemicals together, it also releases energy. No, no, chemically put them together. For example, hydrogen and water. Yes, I mean, not hydrogen. Not. Hydrogen and oxygen put together to make water. Okay. If you have a thing of hydrogen and a thing of oxygen, and you light a match, it goes bang, and you get a big flash of light. It's a wet light. <laughs> and the product is water vapor. Ah. Okay, and what, what, do you remember the last test? You had the question about the endothermic and exothermic reactions. Yeah, exothermic. Thermic right. Was the big kaboom. <coughs> yes. Endothermic was the opposite. Right. So, but endothermic, if it takes energy to put something together, 